Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm just here to draw stuff. I'm not here to teach. Um, so if you're curious on what I'm doing or how I'm doing it, uh, I'd encourage you to look up other YouTube channels and other programs that actually teach the software and whatnot. Today I feel like drawing a tiger and the software I'll be using is Clip Studio Paint. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. Um, so if you want to try the software out, I highly encourage it. It's great for illustration and it's great for comics and all kinds of other stuff. So anyway, um, like I said, I wanted to draw a tiger. So what I did was I went on Google right here and I just Googled tiger. And this was one of the images that came up. So full credit to the photo to Reader's Digest. I did not take this photo and I'm only going to be borrow it so I can draw the image and that's it. So got my reference up here. I've got an example picture here to illustrate certain things to you as I go. Uh, but again, I'm not really teaching anything. I'm just kind of doing a stream of consciousness as I work. Here's my canvas set up as a square, uh, mainly for Instagram. It just makes posting to Instagram so much easier and I don't have to worry about cutting up my image to make it fit. Um, so anyway, here we go. <clears throat> what I'm doing first is I'm kind of laying out my real estate. Uh, in other words, what I'm seeing here, just as an example, is oops. I'm seeing shapes first, like I see the shape of that, I'm looking at the shape of that, shape of the muzzle here, the amount of real estate is involved here, shape of the ear, overall shape of the tiger. These are all important in the foundation process, so that's what I'm doing here. Is I'm just trying to get a layout, lay of the land on, uh, no, not the right shape there. It's, lower trying to get an idea where stuff lives this is a, a very important process I do this and well you should do this and everything your your when I do 3d sculpting I do the same thing I lay out major forms and major shapes first and then as I go, as I build, I add to it, refine it. Right now, I'm not worried about accuracy. I'm not worried about detail at all. Hmm. Feels too compressed. So, uh, I'm working in a vector layer. If you're not familiar with that, you could look up vector layer in Clip Studio. But I like vector layers because it allows me to manipulate the image with, see what I'm looking at right now, is that the edge of, oops, delete that, this terminates here much further back from here. The distance is much greater. That's what I'm seeing. That's what I need to make up for. But uh, vector layers allow me to do some pretty awesome things that normally, as an example, I can delete entire lines quickly and easily and efficiently. Whereas this, if this was a raster layer, it'd be much harder to do or more tedious, at least not so much harder. So right now, Still looking for where stuff lives. Just generalizing. This ear is much further back. Not so worried about how sloppy this gets. Because sometimes it can get really sloppy. 
because I know I can always create a new layer and refine in another layer. There is more beef up here. He's got more going on up top. So I feel like I'm compressing on the vertical too much. So again, reduce the size. I could just easily, oops, keep aspect ratio, turn that off and pull it wider. That could work. Uh, about there. Back to my brush. Cool. Shoulder is higher. Pretty sure this cat's yawning and not roaring. And little things like that can actually make a difference because when I'm thinking roar, it a roar does certain things to the facial anatomy of big cats. So he'd probably crinkle up his, his nose, his snout a bit more. And he'd probably have a much more aggressive feel to him. And when... I don't know about other artists, but I tend to try to feel. Sounds goofy, I know, but it 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 actually plays a part in the creation process. When you can have a little bit of uh, empathy for your subject. That's why sometimes working in front of a live model can be really beneficial, because if you can have empathy and feel the pose and feel the figure and in this case feel the expression of this animal it'll make a difference I'm debating in my mind right now if I want to just open up a new layer and go but I think I'm going to stick with this one just to see how it goes. I can always layer up again later. So I've got the general, uh, maybe a little more real estate here. Maybe I went too big on the nose. Feels like there's not enough here. Maybe I need to drop this down a bit. More of a curve. Paying attention to the angles of these lines here, that's pretty important. Is it me or does he have buck teeth? This tooth actually starts further back. There's a little bit of gum here. I love how entertainment books and movies and stuff or whatever, they talk about how animals have razor sharp teeth and any wild animal that's lived out there in a while for a certain amount of time is not going to have razor sharp. They'll be sharp, but you know, you're going to have wear and tear because, well, these animals don't brush their teeth. No such thing as a uh, tiger dentist out there. So what I'm seeing is that there is, it's much flatter up top here than what I've depicted. So I need to go back. I have too much of a ridge on the top. So maybe get rid of some of that. Maybe 
it starts further back just a little bit. A little bit of a bump there. The crinkling of the nose. So I'm not going for perfect accuracy since this is going to be more of an illustration. Something for fun. I'm not trying to do a one-to-one -one photo reel rendering. Not this time at least. Indicate where that black goes. Indicate that a little bit. Throat kind of comes down here. Question I get a lot is how important is understanding anatomy on your subject? And I usually say very important. You can't really draw something you don't really understand. And for the most part, that's true. Not always. I mean, if you if you just have the ability to understand and break something down as you see it, then chances are you'll probably pull it off. That's not always the case, though, but at least having a basic understanding of, of the anatomy of your subject, whether it be a car or a tiger in this case, or a human being, it'll only help you. So it's, it's always a good idea as an artist just to take a little bit of time, research, take a look at anatomy, take a look at skeletal structures, um, and just study it. <clears throat> so now I think I'm pretty happy with this foundation. Uh, now I'm going to go in and do a little more detailing. And again, this is a fast and scratchy sketch. That's all I'm concerned about. So I get requests for my brushes all the time, as I'm sure a lot of other YouTube artists do. I'm normally not in the habit of giving away my brushes, not because I want to hoard them or anything, it's mainly because these brushes are tuned to my Wacom, my, well I'm running a Cintiq right now, a Cintiq Companion 2, and my brushes are tuned for my setup, and my hand, and all my pressure sensitivities and all that stuff, so giving the brush to somebody is pretty much not really going to help you. Um, I mean, well, look at my settings. That's where they are right there. You can build it yourself. But it's not really going to help you as is. You'd have to tune. You have to tune a lot to get the exact result you want. Indicating a little bit of the shadow here. Using some comic book style hatching to indicate tonal shifts. Getting rid of some of this. Clean it up just a little bit. See the advantage of uh, using vectors? I mean, don't get me wrong, there's there's a lot of disadvantages. Well, not a lot, but they do exist. So it's just understanding what your tools are and what you want out of them. So let's see here. Orange goes out to here. I start more or less here.
even at this stage, I'm still not too concerned about being perfectly clean in my work. Uh, I've got this whole curve here. I'm looking at my curve of the of the mouth, this line here. And I can see that mine is not as clean. Just a little bit. A bit thinner here, this black area. So now I'm looking at how this kind of clusters here. And exactly where it lives in relationship to the rest of the eye, the mouth. I'm plotting and, and thinking as I go and comparing one thing to another, which is pretty much the gist of what most art, if not all art, is when you're creating something. You know, I mean, as a quick example, if you draw a person and you draw one leg like this and one leg like that, <clears throat> well, I mean, if the person is standing straight up like a normal, you know, stance, you would be able to tell that that is wrong because the leg is too high. And that's essentially what I'm using as far as sensibility is concerned in plotting out this tiger. So where are certain things, where can I see them? And where, where do they live relative to each other? Looking at this black blob of uh, it's camouflage here. I'm already feeling like my ear is still too close. Another advantage of vector again, resize. Going with my favorite magic lasso. And, uh, pull it out just a little bit. Feels like it's a little lower too. Not too far. About right there. Go back to my brush. And just keep working. I'm working kind of fast, kind of scratchy, because again, this is a sketch. It's really feeling like the lower jaw is not in the best position. I haven't rendered it all that accurately. Maybe I should have taken a little more time, but uh, not as concerned. I'm just trying to get the gist of it out here. Starting this blobby. It would be really easy to lose myself in just trying to get everything perfect, trying to get everything in just the right location. And if I really cared to do so, I could, but eh, just not really today, not in this video at least. I'm 
my eye is constantly jumping back and forth between the, the photo and what I'm doing. I can already see that I've misplaced some things, but um, again, it's a sketch. Like this whole jaw area below here with this line here, it's just everything needs to be a little further down, but yeah, whatever. Most of the things in that where they belong, mostly. So here to think, here's the thing I'm also keeping in mind that because this is a sketch, um, if I take away the reference image, the audience chances are isn't going to be able to tell that I've missed some things. It's 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 going to work. It's just going to look right because they don't have a, a reference like the photo here to compare everything to. Hence, I can get away with a lot of stuff because the audience, their brain is going to fill in a lot of things. And it works. Demonstration of this is if I simply cover this up and just, you know, let you see the tiger as is without having something for you to compare to it works in your mind doesn't it people have observed they've told me about how when I work I tend to jump around a lot and there's a reason for that I'm constantly comparing one thing to another. So if I over detail something in one area, spend a lot of time doing it, and then suddenly go somewhere else and realize, oh crap, the the nose is just all wrong, the wrong size and everything compared to the eyes, then you know I could resize, but you know, if it's just really wrong, that could be a problem. And I might have to just erase it and start completely all over. And that can be a problem. So rather than dealing with that, I just constantly move around and make adjustments as needed as I go. Got a couple of teeth here. And interesting shapes down in here. Constantly looking for shapes. Stuff that I can just absorb it in a creative manner, just seeing the, the shape of something and just putting that in where it belongs, hopefully. Hopefully get it in the right place. I'm also at this, in that kind of bunched up area here where there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm kind of on purpose leaving things kind of messy. Because when you do that, it's the same kind of trick when you draw hair. You are making it so that the viewer's eye can't really like zero in on any one detail. It's just a mess of detail. And your brain will kind of just fill in what kind of what it wants to see since you on an intellectual level understand that this is a tiger then your brain just kind of like sees it absorbs it and understands oh that's that's you know camouflage detail and other things going on in there and that allows you to get away with a lot of stuff it's a trick it's done in illustration all the time. It's done in comics all the time. 
and it works because I don't want to spend the time to get everything perfect. Again, my eye is constantly jumping back and forth. I know I'm getting some certain shapes wrong, but that's okay. I'm not that worried about it. Yeah, that'll that'll do. And my dog Makita just let herself in. Yes, Makita, named after the power tool. She is a Belgian Malinois, and if you spend an hour with her, you will understand why I named her after a power tool. Black around the lip. More black shape down here. Just gonna scribble this in to cover it up because my my eye is getting kind of lost in here just a little bit as well, so whatever. Detail, detail, detail. It's a sketch. We have this shape here. And it hooks back. I can hear her grinding on her, chewing on her Nylabone chew toy there, so if that comes through too loud, I apologize. Going back a little bit, seeing where the really dark areas are and seeing where I need to add lines with more line weight, darker lines, thicker lines to emphasize certain shapes and forms. That in itself is a little bit of an art form, it's understanding where those lines belong, how to use them. Darken some of these up a little bit. Get a little sloppy here. And I know I can get kind of sloppy because, well, it might work and look good. Because, again, it's the whole 
style and feel of this piece is a sketch at this stage. So the sketchiness might actually complement, might add to the piece. And the other reason why I allow myself to do it is because I know I can always come in and clean it up very quickly and very easily thanks to Clip Studio's vector brushes and vector erasers. Just get some of these stripes in. Again, not too concerned about perfection. line here to for the separation of the the black outer mouth oopsie and the inside of the mouth cross hatching to indicate tonal changes Hmm. Not sure that works. Get rid of that. Just some scribbled in lines to kind of give an indication of the the flow and direction of the fur. I'm just about done with this sketch. And then maybe a splash of color in there will really set it off and call it done. It's pretty dark in the ear here, so I'll add some darker values in the line here. And the eye will kind of pick up. Pick up what I'm laying down here. So I think this is a good sketch to start with. Now for some uh, value. So I don't mean financial value, but value changes. And the way I set up my template uh, documents here is I have a layer that I specifically set as a gray layer. The reason why I do that is because I like to go in with an airbrush with white paint. Or a white color and now I'll actually switch to a raster layer put that underneath sometimes it'll go above depending on on how I feel but right now let's put it underneath I might change it later and maybe a two come in make it darker make the density a little bit more And just kind of go in and suggest some values where they belong. They don't have to be perfect. I'm not going to color in the whole thing. I might throw a splash of color here and there. 
but that's not the purpose of this. This is still a sketch. So I'm still going to treat it like a sketch and not get too bogged down and too concerned about where, you know, about perfection. It's more just, hey, it's a tiger. He's cool. Or she. I don't know. This white doesn't actually exist in the image, but I am making a creative artistic decision to add it in just to kind of give it a, a sense of lighting, that there's a light source above it. Come in. Put a white here. Not overly concerned with perfection again. Sometimes I have to remind myself of that because I could end up getting too focused on, oh, this needs to be perfect, or, you know, I get too lost in detail if my mind wanders and just start over detailing something, and that can be very disadvantage. Oh. <laughs> unadvantageous I don't know I'm dividing my attention here uh, it just won't serve the purpose of the sketch so sometimes I have to just let it go Slightly fog in some light here. Fog in. That is a term from airbrushing. I've done a lot of airbrushing in my time. And what that basically means is you are holding the airbrush kind of far away from the canvas and you're lightly misting on a, a value. And my style, the way I do my, my work, there is some airbrush influences in there. Open up a new layer, put it below the white. Uh, the gray that I've chosen for the background should be about a 40. So I'm going to go with like a 65. Come in and darken some stuff up. Adding some shadow effects. Again, I'm not overly trying, I'm trying not to over detail. I am just adding in some value changes to complement what I'm seeing in the reference. Shadow down over there. And pull out my eraser here. I want to pull back some of these values. It's a hard eraser. Don't want that. Uh, fine, whatever. Don't feel like messing with it right now. Logging on some overall strokes. Might add some stuff afterwards. One more layer. Put it underneath. I'm colorblind, so I'm going to cheat. I don't think I have a good orange set up. So, since this is Clip Studio, a drawing app, I can come in and I can sample a color uh, right about here. I don't know if it's a good color. I can't tell. I'm just going to use it.
and I just give it a suggestion of some color. And just kind of fogging it in a little bit. Maybe a slightly lighter value. Let's go with that. I don't know how well this is working. I might just trash all, trash all the color and just keep it a black and gray piece. Which I do a lot because I'm colorblind. Yeah, I probably just get rid of the get rid of that, keep it black and gray. Let's go back to my white. Put some more emphasis areas here what am I doing wrong nothing I need to go over the gray yeah that's better layer order can matter sometimes well actually not sometimes all the time <clears throat> it's just sometimes it's surprising where it matters So now I'm thinking to myself, I need to be a little careful with just going too crazy with the white because it'll just turn into a, uh, I got to render this out to a full photo real realistic piece now because of all the detail I put in it. So I don't want to go there. See what happens when I put the white over the it too much. Not do that. But what I will do is add a white or a blank layer, raster layer, above the inks or the pencils. Crank up my brush density. Maybe go down to a one and throw in the hairs. See here. Eh, whatever. It's amazing what a few hairs here and there, what it'll do to a piece, to the uh, area it's around. So you don't have to go overboard. Just strategically adding them in. black and go to new layer the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to stay on that layer pull out my eraser 
Okay, I got a hard eraser here. Erase out the center. And all this does is basically gives me a bit of a contrasting background, a little more interesting background. There are easier ways of doing this, but, well, not easier, just different. But some of them require me to do a bit more prep work and set up, and I just don't feel like it. Now when I can just go in manually and just do this. <clears throat> okay I think this is good for now quick sketch more to come so um, thanks for joining me and uh, I'll see you in the next one bye